I wish I were friends with some of them, but I'm not. Yeah. Now, lotteries are a huge cash cow for the province. Last year, the OLG generated $6.67 billion in revenues, with lotteries accounting for about half of that amount. But why did the Lottery Commission increase the pot? Was $50 million not enough to get people to play? Joining us now to talk about your chances of winning a big payout is University of Toronto statistician Jeffrey Rosenthal. So Jeffrey, got to ask you, you know the odds, you understand numbers. Did you pick up a lottery ticket for this uh, last weekend's jackpot and do you play? Uh, no, I did not. And in fact, I've actually never bought a traditional lottery ticket. And uh, is that, be is that because you know you're not going to win? Or because exactly. you just you're not inclined. Well, because I know the odds so well, I just know it's just so unlikely that you're going to win that uh, for me, I can't even dream about winning. It's just so unlikely. It's just not going to happen. So I don't even buy a ticket. Jeffrey, I was told years ago, <clears throat> and I and I, I think I bought a lottery ticket once a long time ago. But I was told by an expert, you have a better chance of getting hit by lightning twice than you do winning the lottery. So is there a way that you can say, you know, your chances of winning a fifty million dollar lottery are akin to? what yeah so they're incredibly small there's all sorts of analogies you can make one is if you have to drive to the store to buy your lottery ticket you're approximately a four times as likely to be killed in a car accident on your way to the store as you are to have the winning ticket oh for my. the jackpot um, <laughs> that's a good one four times oh my. about four times um, if you pick someone at random it's about seven or eight times as likely that that person will one day be the prime minister of canada as it is that you'll win the jackpot. Are those real? <laughs> yeah, those are actual stats? Those are actual stats that I've worked out. Um, yeah, there's a lot of other ones. And the chance of actually being killed, uh, being killed by a bolt of lightning, if you're a random Canadian, are approximately six times as high as the chance of winning the uh, Lotto Max jackpot uh, with a okay, single Okay, so there's a guy named Peter McCarthy who was struck by lightning and just won a uh, million dollars in the lottery, shared it with someone else. So. How what are those that, odds? How is that possible? <laughs> and doesn't that sort of just remind us all that, you know what? It's possible these things can happen. Well, it is possible. But one thing I talk about, like in my book, when I talk about, you know, random coincidences or really surprising things that happen is what I call the uh, out of how many principle. So you have to say, okay, here's one guy who, you know, yeah, he won some money and yeah, he got struck by lightning. But how many other people have uh, lived their whole lives, have bought a lot of lottery tickets, yeah. never been struck by lightning, never won and so on. Then you start to realize, sure, it's going to happen every once in a while to one person, but that doesn't mean it's going to happen to you or that it has much chance at all. Jeffrey, I'm of the opinion that whenever, whenever people see a really big jackpot, they'll line up for, you know, as long as it takes to buy a ticket for 50 million. But if that same jackpot was 15 million, many of them wouldn't even bother with it. Do you have a better chance of winning the lottery for 15 million, thinking that less people will play than you would for a 50 million dollar jackpot that everybody wants to play. Right, so you don't. I mean, the chance of winning the jackpot, because to win the jackpot, you have to match the same numbers that they pick. That's the same chance, whether it's a 15 or a 50 million dollar jackpot. But I can absolutely attest that when the jackpot gets bigger, people get more interested. And since I've been in the, in the uh, media and you know, I have somebody who works on probabilities, when the jackpot gets high, I know it because my phone starts ringing because everyone wants to do an interview and say, hey, what's the chance we're going to win? But when the jackpot's a bit lower, then my phone doesn't ring. So people are really affected by the size of these jackpots, even though the chance of winning is the same. And in fact, when the jackpot's really big and there's all this media frenzy, then that means more people buy tickets. And it's a bigger chance you might have to share the jackpot if you do win it. So okay. for right. me, so I don't see why people get more excited, but they do. Okay, so when it's 10 million, you know we're not going to call you. When it's 20 million, we're not going to call you. But when it's over 50 million, we're going to call you. How does that yeah. make you feel? Well, that's what tends to happen. As I say, people get really excited. And as you know, they've just increased the cap now with the uh, lotto max. The maximum jackpot used to be uh, 50 million. They just increased the cap to 60 million because I guess 50 million just wasn't um, exciting enough anymore. <laughs> and to me, I find it all quite surprising because to me, the real thing is what are your chances of winning? They're just so incredibly small. That's more important than how much whether you'd win 50 or 30 million when you did win. Mm. Okay, so let's let's give people some good news since we've told them all the reasons they're not going to win. <laughs> okay. um, because we do know people win. I notice a lot of groups win. Uh, you know, a group of employees from Rona won the uh, won on the weekend. Yeah. Um, so is it better to buy more? tickets uh, on like so play more personally or are you better off doing the group you know gather with your friends or your co-workers and play that way is there a statistic around those options yeah well it all comes down to balancing your costs against the chance of winning and how much you would win so if you buy one ticket as part of a group then you only have to pay a small amount of money you don't have to pay the full price of the ticket so that means your costs are less 
your chance of winning, if you still buy just the one ticket, then the chance of winning is still the same. But then if you do win, you have to share the prize with more people. So to me, it makes sense to play in a group because even if you have to share a, a really big prize, that's still pretty good and your costs yeah. are going to be lower. So you could do that. Some people buy lots and lots of tickets every week and then their costs go up and the chance of winning also goes up, but it's still a very small chance of winning and then you're paying uh, all this extra money just to get extra tickets. So I think I get the point. Uh, lotteries are a real, real incredible long shot. So if that's the case and you're a numbers guy and I were to ask you what game offers the best odds for gamblers, blackjack, roulette, poker, betting on sports, which one would you more likely, most likely get a return? Yeah, well, it's a good question. So there's, there's some of them which depend on actual skill. For example, if you're betting on sports, well, maybe if you know a lot about sports, that might help. Or Don't if look you're at me. poker, maybe if you have skills, that might help. But then um, for the games at, at the uh, casino, which just have kind of fixed odds, it turns out that the game uh, craps, where you repeatedly roll this pair of dice and look at the sum of the numbers, when you work it out, it's got, you've got about a 49.2929% chance of winning each time. So it's almost a 50-50 game. So it's the closest to sort of having fair odds of all the casino games if you want to pick just one. All right, we've got a minute left. I'm going to throw some numbers at you. Uh, last year, the OLG paid to the province $2 billion, $76 million, and that was an increase of more than $173 million from the previous year. It's a huge revenue tool, obviously, for the province. So I want yeah. to know what your take is on funding hospitals, roads, et cetera, through gambling. Yeah, well, it's an interesting question. In fact, in my case, because I'm a professor at the University of Toronto, it also funds my salary because that comes in directly from the provincial government too. So part of me says, yeah, that's great. Everyone go ahead and buy your tickets because you're helping to fund my salary and, as you say, the hospitals <laughs> and the roads and the schools and everything else. So I can't really knock it as a source of uh, revenue for important things for the government to do. But at the same time, you know, I don't buy lottery tickets and I think the odds are so small it, it seems like a strange thing to do to me, but an awful lot of people still do it. Mm. All right, Jeffrey Rosenthal, he's a statistician. The man with the numbers, we appreciate your time today. Even if it wasn't great news, <laughs> okay. I think people will still be buying some tickets. I think so too. Thanks, Thanks Jeffrey.